Welcome back to another reading and correcting with me, Kendar, the Tiger Knights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. And these are where I read a chapter from one of my stories and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. And if you are looking to support me, that is, on my Patreon. Today, I am doing chapter 22 of Once Broken. The day after the celebration, the two dead were thanked for their service, which consisted of them being brought to the house, laid down at the foot, at the foot of the builder and the learner. Ayala spoke to them, then the small crowd within the building. Alex tried to follow what, she'd, what she said what she said, standing at the back, but his grasp of the language was still too basic. Afterward, the body were placed on pyre-built pyres, plural, there was more than one, built outside, and they were burned. The small victory the Somalian played a role in led to an increase among the people Alex had to train. So, over the following weeks, uh, no, actually, he had to, arrange, to rearrange the group, dividing it into multiple smaller ones, with experienced fighter teaching the new ones. He was glad his con to convince Jacoby to handle the gun training worked because his hands were starting to get really full. Yeah, his hands were starting to get full. He even handed, ended up with a handful of children wanting to learn, but except for the older two of them, they ran off to the town the moment they got hurt. Alex worried he'd have to deal with irate parents, but he never heard about it. He continued learning the language with the children, getting better, but nowhere near fast enough for his liking. He only understood enough to work out every few phrases he heard, and he no longer wanted to have to rely on Rick Eric for translation not after the incident during the celebration. Rigurik seemed to have moved on, but Alex wanted to maintain distance between them. The child said something. Alex repeated it, and the other children giggled. He couldn't pronounce most of the words. He lacked the muzzle and voice, the muzzles that shaved them, and his voice box couldn't create the rumbling that was part of their language. The canting of, the, of her head meant a question. It at least worked out the meaning of most head and ear motion. He recognized the word for fur, but none of the rest. After a moment, she pointed to his arm and he offered it to her. She placed hers next to it. Her fur was a pale, the pale blonde that was common with many of the Somalians here. Also, like many, she had splotches. Hers were black. She ran a hand through her fur, then moved to it, moved over his skin, canting her head. He smiled, understanding the question now, but he had no idea how to convey the answer. Fortunately, Sartos was now, now hung around the class, ready to help him. I don't have fur. He gave Sartos time to translate. Humans only have fur on their head. He ran a hand through his brown hair. It was due for a trim. He ran a finger on his chin and made a face at the bristle, and here too, if I let it grow. She shook. She took hold of one of his harness strap and moved it aside, revealing a line of paler skin. Alex opened his mouth, but didn't know what to say. He'd run out of tanning pills long ago, <clears throat> weeks ago, so his skin only remained dark where exposed to the sun. He looked at Sartos. I have no idea how to explain tanning to her or tan lines, since my harness keeps that section of skin out of the sun. Do Somalians tan, or I guess the sun would bleach the color from your fur instead? Yes, our fur gets darker if we spend most of our time inside or wearing clothing, the reverse of your harness. It happened to me when I was in the city. Humans require that we wear clothing as they do there. Alex nodded and listened to Sartos speak to the child. She ended up. She ended with a very human, quizzical expression on her face. As you can imagine, she hasn't seen anyone with fur not bleached by the sun. Even those who wear tool harness only wear them when they work. The child continued moving the harness strap as she moved her hand down, exposing more pale skin. 
weapon. She let go of it and reached for the waistband of Alex's short. Stop, he said in Somalian. He couldn't hear, he couldn't do the ear thing, though Somalian had to deal with telling someone to stop when they weren't looking. The child stopped moving, canting her head. Alex gently took her hand and moved it away. He had to say the rest in standard. Uh, that part of my anatomy is off-limit to children. Now even Sartos looked at him quizzically. I know no one here covers those parts, but if you let kids, nor kids' normal curiosity lead to exploration of your private part, don't tell me. I can deal with a lot, but that's one thing I don't want to know about. He hadn't seen anything like that, for which he was grateful. Alex turned the child's hand, and the bracelet she wore dangled, a small golden sphere on it oscillating. He looked around, and all the children wa watching him had such bracelet. The adult in attendance had necklaces with golden sphere on it, or one in their ear pavilion. Does everyone wear a representation of the source? He looked at Sartas when, he sp when she spoke Somalian. She was translating instead of answering him. The child looked at her bracelet and spoke. The cadence gave the words a sense she'd repeated them often. There was something about a part being part of... He lost the thread after that. He looked at Sartus. That's too advanced for me. She indicated her ear, with, which had half studs on each side of the skin, making the sphere. We show our connection to the source by them. They are a reminder we are part of a greater community than simply us, this town or even this planet that everyone is connected to everyone else through the source. Alex nodded and filled the information away, going back to the lessons. After another two weeks, he could follow some simple conversation if the people spoke slowly. It helped that other than the children from the classes, Alex spent most of the, his time with the fighters he trained. When he joined them at the tavern, they made sure to keep the conversation to a level he understood. And They'd also picked up a little standard, so he didn't always have to mangle their language. They were at a, ta at a, they were at a table in a corner, Alex against the wall, with a view of the door and the seats on each side vacant. Some aliens were tactile, constantly touching each other as they spoke, but none of them seemed comfortable touching Alex unless they were fighting. He figured his lack of fur made him too alien for them. Rodrigueric had been the only one who'd sat next to him and touched him. It hadn't been sexual or even suggestive. A shoulder bump, a hand on his arm, same as the others, say, same as the others did among themselves. And before he'd realized the Somalian was interested in him, Alex had been okay with it. Now he was happy Eric wasn't joining them. But the lack of touching make him miss, made him miss Somalian touch, Tristan's touch even more. He didn't care that each one had been an act of calculated to make Alex want him. He wanted Tristan to touch him right now. What? Alex looked around the table, the, the silent table, uh, the expectant eyes on him. The Somalian, uh, the Somalians burst out laughing. Alex Farr, Jandin said, people here, not away. And the people here should say interesting things. He mumbled before seeping his mob, his mug. It was fruit juice, the base for one of the alcoholic drink. He got head canting as a response, but didn't bother explaining. Ask a question, Jenin said. What Alex do? I teach you how to fight. The negative tilt of the ear, he pointed up. There, space. Alex looked in his mug working out what he could what he could say as far as comfortable with violence as they were he didn't think they'd understand the level to which he and tristan immersed themselves in it i'm a coercionist he finally answered the exchange of looks told them they didn't understand i work with computers make them do what i want they spoke among each other the conversation becoming fast and excited Alex understood computer, since it was one of the few standard language word that had become part of their language. That's going to sound better. Since it was one of the few words in standard that had become part of their language, and wondered how, since they didn't have one. You fix computer. 
the maroon-furred Somalian with pale gray stripes, asked. He was older, one of the recent additions to the training. Alex shrugged. Sometimes. Fix one now. There isn't a broken computer right now. Was he asking for it, or was he asking for a demonstration? All broken. Alex looked at him. The only computer you have is the weather station, and it's working fine. <clears throat> Jaden, the most... Jenden, the most fluent of, at the table, gave a halting translation. Others broken, this other Somalian said. What other computers? Alex asked. You don't have any other computers. I know. He spent enough, he spent enough time listening for them when he'd arrived, hoping for something to talk to the network with. Whether stations were dedicated machines only receiving the weather information without a, without a way or the processing power to get the, to get it to talk to anything else, the arrival of the shuttle with its functioning comm system had saved this sanity. Six computers, Jendon said, in that way that that asked how Alex hadn't known about it. How come I can't hear them? Head canting, quizzical looks. Alex lifted his hair to show the patch of skin. He tapped it. I can hear computers. I'd know if there were computers here. Broken, the older Somalian said after another halting translation. Jandon hadn't sounded confident, or, and Alex hadn't understood most of it. No power? He asked in Somalians. Off. Why off? Turn on, Torbim said. Word appear. Stop moving. Turn off, turn on, same. How long? Tobim shrugged, looked around, head canted. Long time, the older Somalian answered. First, just slow, then slower. Now stop. Alex tapped a finger on the table. When did this start? Before or after the corporations arrived? No, never mind, it's after. They brought the technology. Was it after Leisure Tech arrived? Is this linked to them trying to pressure you into giving in to their demands? They hadn't understood him. Alex doubted even Rigorik would have. And he realized that Leisure Tech had no reason to cause this. Who would they call with a Who would they call with a working co connection? The law? SpaceGov wasn't here, only the corporation. So it was the law stand-in, and a working computer was to Leisure Tech's advantage. It meant they could call the moment they had enough of being attacked. Did anyone? He switched to Somalian. Did the humans offer to fix? Negative tilt of the ear. So either the corporation wanted them unable to talk to anyone else, or for some weird reason, they weren't aware this was happening. If they weren't aware, this wasn't a corporate attack, and if it had been, they would have left one channel open so the town could call in for it, call in their savior. I look. The older Somalian agreed eagerly. He and Jandon led him to the computer in the closest home. It was on a desk with enough dust on it to show it hadn't been used in recent times. It was so old, Alex didn't recognize it, finding out it was Celeron only after dusting it off and seeing the name on the casing. This had to predate his birth. He turned it on and just watched the screen. As explained, word appeared, a script he only recognized because he'd seen it written on paper Somalians used, but he didn't understand it. After half a dozen line of what had to be the startup check, something that should happen so fast they couldn't be perceived, nothing else happened. He shut it down, deactivated any recording capability on his implants, and turned the computer back on, listening to it. From the start, its voice was distorted and stretched to the point it was a low hum. It happened so fast, too fast for him to get a sense of what caused it. He took out his data pad, partitioned it, and connected to the computer. The new partition immediately filled with code, even if the computer couldn't do anything. The code kept replicating once it, he disconnected the pad from the computer. He let it continue until his data pad started to slow down. He froze the partition, cut apart the code, caged that, and deleted the partition. He brought up the cage and let the program in it run. In no time, the cage was filled with replicated code. No wonder... The old Celeron had been overwhelmed. What? Jendon pointed to the code on the pad screen. Alex studied the code. 
that's a malicious program. It was simple but elegant. The co the coder who'd written written it written it was skilled. It's what's causing the computer to stop working. He realized this was beyond Jandon's comprehension, but before he could figure out how to simplify it, a new voice was speaking, translating. Alex looked behind him to see Eric, Eric in the doorway. His expression was neutral. Can you fix it? Eric asked. Alex looked at the code on his pad again. I'm going to need a more powerful computer, but yes, I can. I don't know how long it'll take, though. He shut down the computer in a hurry to exit, feeling Rigerick's eyes on him the whole time. He heard the laughter from the two other Somalians, and Jandon said something to which Rigerick snapped an angry response. Unfortunately, Alex now understood just enough Somalian to know what the jab had been about, so he didn't need this complication, this temptation. Jacoby looked up from the work he was doing. The outside of the hover was without panels now. Many of the components pulled out, newer ones on a tarp, waiting to go in. Alex hoped there wouldn't be a need to fly anywhere at, for some time, because this didn't look like it would be quick to put back in place. Jacoby raised an abra, then looked at the sky. It's not dark yet. What are you doing back here? Your new friends throw you out? Fuck off, Jake. Don't! Jacoby snapped his mouth shut and went back to work. Alex sat at the control and was pleased that even with the work Jacoby was doing, the power was still on. He didn't want He didn't want to use the other hover for this. This was time. This was a time when he didn't want a connection to the network. Most coder put instruction for their programs to call home so they could keep track of how it was proceeding, and some could work around shutdown comm system. The hover's broken system guaranteed the program wouldn't talk to anyone but him. Alex created a partition within the hover system, walled it off, then added security to ensure the malicious program couldn't escape. From the little each scene of its code, it found a way out. If it found a way out of that cage, it would fill the hover system so fast Alex wouldn't have time to stop it. He released the code into the cage and set to work. First, he tried to erase it, but as he expected, it reproduced faster than he could cope. He released antibodies, but even that was too slow and got eaten up. By then, <clears throat> the cage was filled and he could barely make out the code anymore. He wiped it, reinserted the code, and slowed the system as much as it would go. For all intent, the hover was now inoperable, but he could watch the code work, saw it bloom around itself. Yeah, this was going to take a while. Part of what made this take longer was that Alex had to go from one hover to the other to do his research. It would be easier to bring the other hover out of the forest and closer, but Jacoby had removed so much of it, it couldn't... I'd removed so much it couldn't fly anymore. He confirmed this wasn't a corporate operation, or at least not one, using code that had been collected before. The database of which corporation used what kind of code and grammar was extensive, and new code didn't operate for long before being added to it. As much as corporation didn't want their own code to end up in it, they depended on the database to know who was attacking them also confirmed this wasn't a known code, so not a large operation, and no one who'd encountered it before with information on how to deal with it. So it was back to basic. Cut and, st cut and study coding. Building a custom antibody designed specifically to deal with this program. He worked on it every day before training, with Jacoby having to pull him out when the fighters were assembled. Then he went back to it in the afternoon instead of taking part, taking part in the classes and going to the tavern. This was a convenient way to avoid Rick Eric. Alex didn't like the way he was reacting to the Somalian. The temptation kept growing as the Somalian became a better fighter, as he managed to cut Alex more often. He couldn't avoid Rick Eric during training, but the rest of the time he didn't have to tempt himself. He was Tristan's, he reminded himself, no one else's. After a week, he had something he was confident would work, 
only to have it be overwhelmed when he released it in, into the infected computer. He'd have made he'd made the mistake of thinking a small sample inside a cage would be the same as a fully infected computer. It had been too long since he'd done this. Two weeks later, he had a more robust program. The woman who lived in the home watched him as he released the program into the computer. His program worked, you could see that, but it was slow. It had to compensate for the almost frozen processor, but after a few hours it was picking up speed as more of the malicious code was broken down. I check tomorrow, he told the woman. Keep on. Fixed? She asked, she asked hopeful. Maybe. No tomorrow. Alex stood, turned, and froze. Rigorick stood in the open doorway. This couldn't be good. Alex walked toward him and had to stop when Rigorick didn't move. Really? More? The Somalian spoke to the woman, but Alex didn't understand, didn't understand one word of it. She answered, and again, Alex didn't understand it. You've gotta be fucking kidding me, he sighed. Had they purposely kept part of the language hidden from him so they could talk around talk around him like this? Rigorix canted at his ear. Kidding means joking. He searched for Alex, who stepped back. The woman was you used that opportunity to slip around Rigorick and out of the out of, out the home, leaving the two of them alone. Who is joking? You, them, he answered in exasperation. You're not teaching me Somalian, are you? What is it? Some sort of shortened, simplified version? Rigorick canted his head again. You learn Gerlin. So that's what you call what you're teaching me? It's a kid's language? Gerlin is my language. Alex rolled his eyes. It isn't what you spoke with her. I'd have understood at least some of that. So what did you speak with her? Some sort of code? I speak Rolanger with Ninia. So what did you tell her you didn't want me to understand? I say I want to talk with you. She asked, I do elsewhere. I do it. She asked, I do elsewhere. I do it elsewhere. I say I will take you with me. Alex glared at him. And you couldn't say that so I'd understand it? Her girlening is weak, weaker than you. Easier I speak or <laughs> Oh, man. Rolarger. How can her Somalian be worse than mine? She grew up here. She from mountain region. Not here, not long. Come for mate. Alex closed his eyes and forced his exasperation, exasperation down. This didn't make any sense. Why would her being from another region matter? She's from the same planet. I'd get it if she had a regional accent, but she's still Somalian. Rigorick looked as confused as Alex felt. Here, speak Gurlanin. Where Nanir is born, speak Rorlarger. Different place, different language. Swamp different, forest different, other plains different. Language different. That normal? No, it isn't. Everyone speaks standard. That's why it's called standard. How everyone speaks same language? Because space, space govs make sure everyone does. Alex rubbed his face. How could Rigrick not know that? What's space gov? Alex stared at him. What do you mean, what is it? It's everything. It controls the whole of space, enforces the laws, makes sure everyone talks the same. You've never heard of it? Negative flick of the ears. How can you not? Alex smiled. Oh, the bastards. Of course, Leisure Tech isn't going to let you find out about them. Okay, you know what? I'm going to change that. Because there's been other corporations here before. Of course, corporations aren't going to let you find out about them. You could get SpaceGov involved, and then they'd have to play by the rules. Rigorick canted his head. Never mind. 
like I said. It isn't like you can call them anyway. Any communication on the, this planet has to go through the, a corporate node, and that's going to be supervised to make sure SpaceGov never gets involved. Rigoric motioned up. Everyone speak same? I'm guessing there's a few a few primitive planet that'll have their own language still, but yeah, if they have access to space, they speak the same language. Rigoric looked at him with what Alex could only interpret as shock. How many languages does Somalia have? Rigoric shrugged. I know Gurlana, Rolagar, Klek Turk, many others. Alex indicated the computer. But you have those broken. It wasn't it wasn't always. What do you use them for? Call family who went away, friends, mates. But you can talk to everyone else on the planet, in space, the whole of the universe. Why? Alex opened his mouth and found he didn't have an answer. He was so used to it that he'd never considered why someone else might need all those possibilities. I don't know. To find out what's out there, out of curiosity, what version does Tristan speak? Human. No, he spoke something like what you did. Eric canted his head, and Alex tried to recall when he'd heard Tristan speak it. It was in the city, so I guess you haven't heard it. When he looked back at Rigeric, the Somalian was close to him. Alex placed a hand on his chest to keep him from coming even closer, wondering why he hadn't even considered reaching for a knife. Rigeric's skin felt hot under his fur. Alex? The Somalian's voice was soft. I am strong. Don't do this. He tried to sound stern as he pushed Rigoric back, but all that happened was his head sinking deeper into the fur. I am strong enough. Unlike the last time, Rigoric didn't reach for him, but his desire was visible in his eyes. I'm not Somalian. I know. The words were breathed with desire in them. Alex growled at, Rig at Rigoric or at himself. He didn't know. He pushed harder and the Somalian backed up a step. I told you, I'm taken. Rigoric sniffed the air. I can smell what you want. Alex opened his mouth, ready to tell him to mind his own business, but a yell of alarm came from outside. There was another of her in, of her inbound. He and Rigoric ran out to get everyone ready. This concludes chapter 22 of Once Broken. If you are enjoying this, please um, leave a like. If you want to know when the next chapter is going to be up, subscribe. Hit the bell. If you want to read the book, as well as the others in the series, they are available at all major e-retailer. If you want to support me and get access to basically everything else I've written, that is on my Patreon. And if you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning. 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. The links are in the notes, and with that, I shall wish you a good day.